This video describes how to measure active soil carbon, which is a fraction of soil carbon that is thought to be associated with soil health, and may change more quickly than total soil carbon in response to management that either improves or degrades soil health. These are the materials necessary for the active carbon test. First of all, we have here air-dried soil. We usually do it on air-dried soil. Um, I have a balance. This one is accurate to one milligram. Um, one one hundredth of a gram is also just fine. Um, it's a small balance that we have here. Uh, this is a, uh, a spoon or other spatula, something for weighing out soil. That's important. Then we also need uh, some sort of container where we're going to digest the soil with the per permanganate solution tube. Here we have, we can also replace that with some sort of other plastic container we would find in the marketplace. Of course, the all important thing is the digestion solution, which has permanganate and calcium chloride in it, and we'll get to that within the, the method. We'll see that in a minute. Here is a graduated cylinder, 25 ml graduated cylinder. That's uh, very helpful as well for measuring out solution. Uh, this is also is very important. This is the colorimeter called the Hanna Checker Phosphate High Range, or HR. Uh, and we use this, it has an absorptance of around, uh, measures around 530 nanometers. Um, now for this, we also need the vials which go into the checker. So you can see here the way this vial goes in. Um, if we're using the multi-spec, then uh, this is a from Photosync. This is a field colorimeter and does all, all sorts of other things with leaf color. Then we would want this uh, square cuvette uh, to be used with that and those, those are available as well. Um, now, for the dilution, uh, when we put the materials into the ch uh, checker, we need to have a dilution step, and there we need a second container, which could be this centrifuge tube, and it could also be this other container. And also for the dilution, it's very helpful to have a graduated dropper. So this is a uh, uh, transfer pipette, plastic transfer pipette, which has a half milliliter graduation on the side here where my thumb is. And we could make that ourselves too if we have a dropper and an accurate scale, we can make ourselves a dropper of this type. But since these are available sometimes or we can find plastic droppers, that this is a helpful thing to use. Here is how you make the reagents. For each 500 milliliters of solution, you will need 1.19 grams of potassium permanganate and 7.35 grams of calcium chloride. You can weigh these out in a bottle and then add 500 milliliters clean or distilled water. Because these are not concentrated solutions, you will not need a volumetric flask. You can just add the reagents to 500 milliliters of water. We'll now show you the procedure with two soils. One is a low carbon subsoil. The other one is a fallow soil, which has had 10 years of fallow vegetation, and so that should have much higher active carbon. The first step is to weigh 2.5 grams of soil into the digestion container, or digestion tube. And this should be done to an accuracy of 0 0.05 grams and then recorded on a data sheet. The second step is to add 20 milliliters of digestion solution with potassium permanganate to the digestion tube and the soil and then shake for two minutes. So here you can see that we're using a graduated cylinder to measure out 20 milliliters of solution. This could also be weighed. If you wanted to weigh it, you could weigh 20 grams of solution because the density of the solution is not very different from water. You could also pre-measure these 20 milliliters into the tube. Now we add the 20 milliliters of solution to the tube and the soil and we'll put the lid on and then shake it for two minutes before allowing it to settle.
And now we're coming up on two minutes. There we go, there's two minutes. So now I start to let it settle. And then I can see there are a few grains of soil on the side there along with that liquid. So once it's settled for about 10 seconds or so, and get all the sand down in the bottom, which you can see here, there's some sand already settled at the bottom there. So once that's happened, I, I give it kind of like one last little rinse, which should get any large particles down into the bottom. And then I'm going to allow this to just settle for 10 minutes. After allowing the solution to settle, we will dilute it with 1 half ml in 30 mls before reading the color. What we're showing you here is the 100% control solution with no soil added and how we've diluted it. So this is about the color we're looking for. Now to dilute the sample, we'll use a second dilution container. And here we have 30 milliliters of clean water. And to that we're going to add half a milliliter of um, dark solution from the soil digest. And we're going to use this half ml graduated dropper. So very carefully, I'm going to pull up. And then I'm going to push it out until I just see that it's at the 0.5 ml line. And then I'm actually going to check now to see whether when I push the liquid right to the end of the dropper, is it at the half ml mark. And then I add it to the solution. I can rinse it a few times up and down into the dropper by squirting out the dropper a few times. That makes sure all of the dark solution has gone into the dilution tube. And then I cap it and mix it a little bit. Here I'm making a preliminary comparison between the 100% and the sample. This is a low carbon sample so we don't see very much color difference. After diluting, the next step is to read the um, color of the solutions, both the unreacted solution or the 100% solution and also the uh, so, uh, solution from the tube that was reacted with the soil. And it's the comparison of those two which will give us the, uh, the, the reading of active carbon. In addition, we need to read, uh, for the reading, we also need to have a, uh, just a sample of plain water as a blank to put into the meter. We can wipe the tubes off before putting them in the colorimeter to make sure that they are clean and don't have any smudges or marks on the side. We can also label the tubes, but label them on the lids so that we're not obscuring the vials with the marker. To start the measurement, we first put in the blank which is just clean water. We turn on the meter by pressing the button once. Again, that's the blank. Turn on the meter. It will then will say C1. Then we press the button again and we wait. It will then say C2. That's when we put in our sample or other color reading or 100% that we want to do. First the 100%. And now we wait, and the reading of the 100% is there, 17.6. Now we look at the low carbon soil sample that we reacted with the permanganate. So we're going to do the same procedure. We open the meter, put in the blank, turn on the meter by pressing the button. We wait, it says C1, we press again. Now we wait for C2, and only now we open up, we put in the sample, close again, and press, and now the reading will show up.
the solution from the high carbon soil is visibly lighter than the 100% because it had more carbon. Now here it's also very easy to see the difference between the high carbon fallow, the 100%, and a little bit the low carbon subsoil. I want to show you the reading of this high carbon fallow soil and what reading we get. So we have a reading of 8.5 which is a lower number and therefore a higher active carbon as we will see soon in the calculation section at the end of the video. When you do multiple samples, it's important to stagger the shaking and the settling steps so that you have time to do the readings before moving to the next one. This diagram and table show an example of how you can do this by spacing the beginning of each analysis out by five and a half minutes and then making time for yourself to do the measurements. You can set up a table, as we show here, which will tell you the times that you need to follow, and then you can also fill in the data as you go when you take the data. So the uh, two last columns in the, in the table are, are the example, just some example um, data from, from, the, uh, from measuring the solutions after digestion. These are the calculations you will need to figure out the active carbon reading for the soil. In the first two steps here, we figure out how much permanganate was consumed by reacting it with the soil. Next, we use this change in concentration and the volume of the solution to figure out the moles of permanganate which were consumed, and then we convert this to milligrams of oxidizable carbon. When we divide these milligrams of oxidizable carbon by the initial weight of soil in the analysis, we get the content of active carbon in the soil. 